Hey guys, it's me again. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. So I got quite a few comments and DMs from you guys basically saying you want to see more economics videos about how I structure my essays. So as you can tell by the title guys, today we're going to be talking about how to structure your 15 markers and I've got an exemplar essay of mine which got 15 out of 15. So I'm going to basically tell you guys how to get full marks or A star standard, you know, that's the aim we're trying to aim for. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. Basically, the way I'm going to do this video is I went through my folder and I found a couple of um, 15 marker plans. I do AQA, but the structure should probably be roughly the same for most exam boards anyway. But I'm going to break down the mark scheme and the criteria of what they essentially ask for in the exam. And then I'm going to show you my plans. So how like my plans and essays sort of compare to the mark scheme. And then I'm going to show you one of my essays that I did, which I got 15 out of 15 on. But wait, before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly. Anyways, let's get on with the video. I'm going to show you this on the screen and then you can screenshot it if you want. So this is basically the criteria and specification on, I think it's on the AQA website, that the AQA examiners look for when you write your 15 marker. Now on the AQA website, this is gonna be a lot more wordier and stuff like that, but as I'm a student, I wanted it to be as easy as possible for me to understand what they're looking for. So I basically condensed this into five, very easy and straightforward points that you can remember. The first two points are pretty straightforward. It has to be well organized, so paragraphs, and select key issues relevant to the question. Um, that basically goes without saying, you know, that should be common knowledge. The next point is show sound knowledge and understanding of economic terminology and concepts. When you make a point, don't just make a point and then move on to another point that might be different. You want to make a point and then elaborate on it and support it with some evidence or context or background information. That shows you have very in-depth knowledge and understanding of that point that you're talking about. The next point is include application of relevant economic principles to the given context and good use of data to support. So the good use of data to support is pretty straightforward. You need to use the case study that they give you. So every exam paper will have um, a case study that you have to study and analyze before you answer the questions. Basically, you need to identify key points from the context and talk about them at large in your essay, okay? You need to make heavy use of context in 15 and 25 markers and not just the data, okay? This is what will differentiate you from other students. You need to make sure you're reading the news. Now trust me, as a student, I completely understand that some of us may not like or enjoy to read the news or watch the news at 10 o'clock, but don't worry, I've got your back because I know some really good subscriptions that are free and pages on social media that you should definitely be following if you're an economist because this will keep you up to date with all the latest news and these are what I follow, okay? So on Instagram, I follow Bloomberg Business. This is really, really interesting because they've got good articles. I follow Financial Times and The Economist, which are both pretty similar. And The Economist is especially good because it will have a picture with um, a bit of a description about a topic. And then they have a link in their description on Instagram that you click on and it will show the full article for free. So I really recommend that. I also follow Rishi Sunak because he's just a G, like, come on, you've got to follow him. And he also has some good news and stuff and keeps us up to date with the British economy. And also one really good page that does, it's not really as popular, it's called Mercury 27 BC. And I came across this recently and basically they give you a briefing every single day on the top five or six news articles of the day. And it's literally in a post format so i'll show you here now the next social media is linkedin if you've not got a linkedin hop on that so i follow ted conferences harvard business review bbc news and then the financial times as well now the next thing i will tell you about is probably the most important one out of all the things i just listed it's called morning brew and it, you can subscribe to it for free and basically you'll get an email every single day about all of the latest current affairs 
and about the stocks, what's happening in the stock market. And it's about a 10, 15 minute read every day. It can be a bit long, but it's really, really informative really useful and it goes into quite a lot of depth unlike social media where the articles are a bit more brief so moving back to the points which i just rambled on about one point for ages uh, it says include application of relevant economic principles to the given context you want to use diagrams okay in 15 markers you should at least use one diagram and the last point is include well-focused chain of analysis and i'll show you what i mean in a bit so this is essentially the criteria to reach the level three band so 11 to 15 marks so the top band you need to make sure you hit all of these nails on the head okay you need to make sure you hit all of these points and the way my teacher sort of told us to lay out 15 markers is firstly define the key term in the introduction then you want to have two paragraphs or three at a push and then you need to have one diagram so just so you guys sort of get a better understanding i'm going to show you what my teachers made us follow at school so feel free to screenshot this now this plan and structure that i just showed you is really good and it will ensure that you get really good marks but for me personally i've never been one to follow the structure to a t for example in my gcse's for english you're meant to do pee -E, so point evidence explain and link i never really followed that i sort of went through my own way i kind of went rogue you know and i just sort of wrote things in my own structure and that sort of followed through in my economics i find it quite restrictive so the way i structure my 15 markers is similar but different at the same time so in my intro i have a definition and then i have context which is the same as how it is here but i go a bit further and i actually support my context with something so let's take an example if we're talking about the school structure if we had a question about recession let's say we would define recession and say declining gdp for two successive quarters okay and then we could um, give some context saying a prime example would be the 2008 to 2009 recession and financial crisis that shook the uk and the rest of the world and then one might leave it there but we want to go a step further and we can talk about how the recession came into play some statistics what was the unemployment rate at that time how can we compare that to the recession level now so you need to have a bit more support and depth now i know in the structure that they talk about at school it said two point paragraphs and three at a push for me personally i never ever ever did two paragraphs you never want to do two paragraphs if you want to get the top grades you want to make sure by hook or crook you do three paragraphs now the next thing i'm going to say is it's optional you don't have to do this for every essay but i would recommend that you use at least one however it depends on so an evaluation essentially you want to evaluate at least one of your paragraphs but you don't just want to say however it depends on x y and z you want to support this further now this is sort of more for a 25 marker but if you have extra time and if you're good with time i would suggest this now this won't necessarily guarantee you get more marks as such but it will show that overall you have sound economic knowledge and sound economic understanding of the topic at hand and that in itself can show the examiner you deserve the best of the best marks. When I was saying about the supporting, however it depends on, you want to sort of say, given that, okay? So you could say, however, this might depend on X, Y, Z. Given that in the current economy, this is happening, this might not actually have this big of a consequence. So the given that part is essentially context of current affairs and knowledge. And finally, you wanna make sure you have one diagram. You don't need to have two or three, one is sufficient now i'm going to show you my 15 marker plan and i've annotated it and i'm going to talk you through it so feel free feel free feel free to screenshot this so the question is explain four features of a recession so in my intro uh, i said to define recession and explain the financial crisis leading to the recession so here i didn't use too much support because it's explained four features of a recession, which means you need to have an intro and then four paragraphs, so four different points 
instead of three, which was meant to be the sort of push thing. So before I start paragraph one, I'm just gonna let you guys know, you do not need to understand any of the ideas and concepts that are being talked about because the focus here is structure. Let me know if you would like me to um, actually do economics lessons on my YouTube channel. I'll do a po poll now. Comment down below what you want my first lesson to be. So paragraph one, during recession, business and consumer confidence is low due to a lack of growth. So here we have a point which I've called P, business and consumer confidence is low, and then we start the chain of analysis. Therefore, firms will lay off workers, which means an increase in cyclical unemployment. High levels of spare capacity, which is 0.4, which leads to cheaper labour, 0.5. So therefore, cost of production will fall, which leads to lower price and an increase in consumption and exports. So as you can see, I had nine chains of analysis in that one paragraph alone. This is all relevant knowledge and this is all relevant to the point in the question, which is why it's okay to include. So leading on from this, I sort of had two options of however it depends on points. Um, this is because the plan was done in class, so I had no time pressure. So I allowed myself to have two points to choose from, but in the exam, you're only gonna have time for one. So I really only list one. So in my paragraph two, similar to the first paragraph, we have a point. So low interest rates to incentivize an increase in investment will lead to a lower cost of borrowing, which leads to firms taking out more loans to invest in capital. Therefore, it will lead to streamlined production process, which leads to a decrease in price and then an increase in marginal propensity to consume. So I had eight points there, okay? So eight chains of analysis. And then I talked about the support of marginal propensity to save falls, as there's a therefore fall in savings ratio. So my support of my however it depends on point was the fall in savings ratio, which is an automatic stabilizer. So will it really increase investment? So that's what I mean when you need to have a however and then support. But like I told you just now, um, this was written in class. So I have quite a couple of however it depends on points, but you only need one for a 15 marker. You can go above and beyond and do more if you have time, but aim for one at the minimum. Remember, you want to give an explanation for every point you make. Why is this happening? Always ask yourself, why? Can I explain this in more detail? The question itself said to explain four features of a recession, which is why there were four points. And as you can see, there's a similar pattern for each point, but in the real thing, unless it states otherwise, aim for three paragraphs, three point paragraphs. So that's essentially my plan, just so you guys sort of have a brief idea of how I structure my 15 marker essays. I'm starving. Thousands of tears later. So I just had a little snack break because I got really hungry. But now we're going to move on to the actual example essay, the moment you've all been waiting for. So here, in black, I've broken down what the points are that I've talked about, and then the little green squiggly thing, and then that. Uh, that's basically what part of the exam criteria mark scheme thing that it meets. I'm going to put a screenshot of the essay on the screen. Uh, I'm going to try and also have it on a Google Doc down below. So, the question is, explain how interdependence and uncertainty affect the behaviour of firms in oligopolies. And remember, you don't need to have any knowledge on the topic of oligopolies and market structures, okay? Don't worry, we're just looking at the structure here. Oligopolies are markets dominated by a few firms with high barriers to entry and exit. That's my definition, okay? Firms don't compete with price changes, but instead differentiate products and services, such as Tesco being the first supermarket to introduce home delivery. Now that is a bit of context. Then I go on further to say all other supermarkets then had to follow suit and also provide home deliveries too. That itself has explained the interdependent nature of oligopoly, which is in the question. This is due to price rigidity, that oligopolies face, which is actually a characteristic of our oligopolies that I've also explained, which is part of like the definition. With the fear of a price war and hence one firm becoming insolvent, oligopolies don't compete on price. So do you see the way I've sort of broken up um, my structure? I've done a bit of definition, bit of context, support, then more definition. Any average normal student would have said, oligopolies are markets dominated by a few firms with high barriers to entry and exit. For example, Tesco being the first supermarket to introduce home delivery meant that all other supermarkets then had to follow suit. We're not aiming to be average, we're aiming for full marks, A stars, 
you know we're in for the top so on my whiteboard for paragraph one i've said the definition which is supported by the tesco context um, and then a brief explanation of price rigidity. So this linking to the Marx scheme is application of relevant economic principles and context. Moving on to paragraph two. Oligopolies are interdependent. The action of one firm has a following impact on the actions of other firms in the market, such as the supermarket example above. Now that is my definition of interdependency. And it's not really context because I've just said supermarket example above, but it just showed that it relates, you know? So it's that's acceptable. This feature is exacerbated by the asymmetric information within the oligopolistic market. Now that shows sound economic understanding because I've linked this economic principle of asymmetric information to the point at hand, which is why it's a good, it's a good point. And then one firm may possess more information than rivals and consumers, hence causing other firms to follow suit in actions to prevent losing out on sales, market share and supernormal profits. So as you can see there, I've explained the asymmetric information, what it is exactly in the context and how it affects the oligopoly. So I've gone in a lot of depth in that paragraph, okay? So, according to what I've written here on my whiteboard, for paragraph two, that I've defined the interdependency, and then I've supported it by asymmetric information, and I have three deep chains of analysis. So you know how in the plan I showed you before, I had about eight or nine points per paragraph, yeah? That would have been acceptable as well. But here, the reason why this is good is because First of all, for market structures and oligopolies, you can't really have that amount of chains of analysis, you know? Um, but that was all relevant, even still. But here, I have three really deep chains of analysis. Linking that to the Marx scheme, it shows sound knowledge and understanding of economic concepts and ideas, okay? And then for the three deep chains of analysis, that hits the nail of well-focused chains of analysis. Because remember, there are three deep ones related to the question. Now, moving on to paragraph three. The key oligopolistic characteristic of interdependence means that firms can't pursue independent strategies. And then I've gone to explain this point in depth. Once a price has been determined at P, so I've referenced the diagram that I've drew here. Oh, by the way, do not draw your diagrams like I've drawn mine. My teachers always used to say that draw your diagrams bigger. I don't know why, I just hate drawing my diagrams big, but you need to make sure your diagrams fit at least half a page or whatever, you know. Moreover, if a price leader, in brackets, a firm owning greatest market share, so I've basically shown more understanding that I know this other key, key term. So basically, I'm explaining the diagram here. According to my whiteboard here, for paragraph three, I have five chains of analysis, and that's great, okay? But what's even better is that I talk about the elastic demand. People might not really go to that extent and talk about in detail the elastic and the inelastic part of the diagram. They might only talk about the point of the price and how the price changes um, from equilibrium, if you raise the price and if you lower the price, what happens? And that adds to the depth of understanding. So here, the fact that it's a diagram and I've referenced it throughout is application of knowledge. And then the fact that I talk about the price leader and I've defined it, that shows sound knowledge and understanding because I'm using relevant economic terminology and concepts. So then I actually go on to say, firms no longer need to compete on price. However, this is unlikely due to the high levels of uncertainty within the market, blah, 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 you can read the rest. But what I've written here on my whiteboard is, the whole paragraph is analyzing the diagram in depth, but the evaluation of the point, so the however I just talked about, is supported analysis and depth, which adds that other dimension to the essay, you know? So if it adds that, you can like think of things from different perspectives, which shows that you've really thought about this thoroughly. So the final paragraph, oligopolies can collude in order to maximize profit. So that's the point. By restricting output, scarcity of goods drives up prices, which maximizes supernormal profits for all firms. Moreover, Collusion is difficult to prove if it is tacit. A prime example of tacit oligopolistic collusion is drug cartels. 
Perhaps when bidding for contracts in certain regions, some firms agree to offer extortionate prices to force sellers to go with a specific cartel only, thus making them the sole supplier of that region. Paragraph four here, it says, the point, which was my collusion, is supported by an analysis of three chains. And like I said before, you don't have to have a million chains of analysis. You need to have concise, precise, relevant chains which are in depth. So I'm talking about oligopolies here. Now, if I start talking about how this links to recession, that's completely irrelevant and I'm not gonna gain marks. Now, if I wanted to, I could have analyzed this with a thousand points. For example, I could have said that if the oligopoly engages in a price war with other oligopolies, reducing their prices until one firm has to leave the market, that firm may become insolvent. Therefore, they would be, they would be unable to pay sufficient wages to their workers that have to lay off the workers which would lead to many workers becoming unemployed. This level of unemployment could lead to uh, an increase in cyclical unemployment, which could lead to recession. I could have linked it to that if I wanted to. If I would have gone further, it could have linked to recession. But do you see how irrelevant that is to the question? Now, when I first started economics in year 12, I did this. I linked it to a thousand and one different things, probably linking it to recession, I'm not gonna lie. But over time, I learned that less is more. And you can see that here because I've had a few concise points which are very in depth. And in the other one where I had about eight to nine sort of uh, chains, that's because it was possible and they were all relevant to the question and the topic at hand. Now, here's where it gets even better. I have an evaluation point. So when I say, moreover, collusion is difficult to prove if it's tacit, Although I'm not explicitly saying however it depends on, this could have been reworded to say, however, this depends on whether the collusion is tacit or explicit. It would have been the same thing. And then I've got it even further. A prime example of tacit oligopolistic collusion is drug cartels. Context there, okay, context. And I've gone even further to support it. Perhaps when bidding for contracts in certain regions, some firms agree to offer extortionate prices to force sellers to go with a specific cartel only thus making them the sole supplier of that region. Do you see the level of support which shows such an in-depth knowledge of this topic? Now, I'm looking at the criteria here and that last paragraph itself hits a, hits a target of shows sound knowledge and understanding of economic terminology and concepts, include application of relevant economic principles. I talked about tacit collusion and then I've given context, drug cartels, um, and I've had well-focused chain of analysis. So I had three chains of in-depth analysis in that paragraph itself. So overall, when we look at the criteria, I'm gonna put the criteria on the screen again. It shows me that, of course, they were well-organized paragraphs. I chose select key issues relevant to the question. I talked about interdependence and uncertainty. Uh, I show sound knowledge and understanding and blah, blah, blah. That's why I got 15 out of 15 on that essay because of the way that I structured my work. So the key takeaways of the video are, number one, understand what the examiners are asking from you. So what's the criteria? And the second point is, know the way you will structure your 15 marker. Now it's up to you what you do, but I would really recommend you go with my structure because it's no different towards what your teachers will tell you. The only difference is I've added more layers to mine. The next point is in your plan, have at least one however it depends on with support to elevate that. So there we have it guys. That is how to get four marks on your 15 marker micro economics essays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a huge thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, and comment down below what you want to see next. Anyways guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.